Today, I would like to represent you exercise stress test using cycle ergometer uh, for diagnostic purposes. First of all, we need to have some small check with our patient, Tatiana, to check if we have any contraindication to the following test. Okay, Tatiana, have you ever had any um, uh, problems with your consciousness, like you felt like almost unconscious or being unconscious? No? No. Uh, any problems with your heart rhythm? So maybe you ever felt like your heart is beating too fast or too slow or with some um, arrhythmia? No. Uh, have been diagnosed with some uh, problems with your heart, uh, maybe congenital heart disease or something like this? No. Okay. Um, do you um, consume any medication on everyday basis? No? No. Okay. So, we checked the most important things here and now we can pass to the next stage uh, to the uh, exercise setup. First, this is ECG system. Today we are going to use a wireless uh, ECG system, uh, Polyspectrum 8EX. It is Bluetooth device and uh, this wireless feature is very important in the exercise stress testing setup because we can uh, allow our patient move freely in our diagnostic room, for example, to come from a uh, bicycle to a couch uh, for some rest or in case of some emergency. And also uh, medical personnel can uh, work in the room freely without danger to find the cable of the device under the leg and to fall over it. So. Here we have an um, electrode placed and this electrode placement system is known as uh, Mason-Licard system. It is a special uh, scheme that is quite different from the standard uh, lead position and it is um, proposed for the exercise stress testing. Why? Because in the started lead position we have wrists and um, ankles used to place uh, four electrodes. But in our case, our patient's uh, arms and legs will be moving during the test. So it may cause a lot of noise um, on our ECG. That's why we move these electrodes from the limbs to the um, most um, uh, part that uh, maybe imitate the uh, normal lead position. So uh, on the shoulders and here on the trunk. All in all, this scheme provides ECG that's uh, comparable to standard, but you can never compare ECG recorded at the standard and uh, masonry car because, for example, uh, uh, heart axis will be a little bit different, the voltage of these uh, leads will be a little bit different, but for exercise stress test, we compare ECG recorded during uh, the rest uh, period of this exercise stress test and during the exercise period. So we do not compare standard ECG and ECG uh, by mason Likar system. So now we ask our patient to move to the bicycle. Please sit here. And we need to check the position. The handlebars uh, should be positioned to provide the patient with a comfortable sitting, so sitting straight, holding the bars. Uh, the height of the saddle is set uh, to provide the patient ability to almost straighten the leg in the lowest position of the pedal. Uh, not 180 degrees, that's a straight line, but with a little bit angle, about 5 degrees, so 175 degrees. Uh, it will allow the patient to push with enough power. Uh, it will be very important uh, during the high load uh, to provide all the power of the patient to the pedals. Okay, then we need to uh, give some instruction to the patients about the test. Uh, so you should uh, pedal with a speed about 60 rates per minute. Uh, this rate is indicated here on the screen and I will control this rate on the PC screen too. Uh, I can tell you a different speed, for example 65 or 70, 
depending on the exercise and your reaction to the exercise. Please uh, pay attention. Now we are dealing with electronically braked devices like this bike ergometer. So it uh, automatically controls the power output in watts. So if I put 50 watts, this system will provide 50 watts independently of the pedaling rate from about 30 to about 100 per minute. Uh, this uh, goes in uh, contrast to the mechanically braked system, where the pedaling rate, uh, increasing pedaling rate, uh, increases the load and decreasing pedaling rate decreases load. Here, the load is constant, independently on the pedaling rate. But the convention that goes from the past, that we have 60 per minute, that's okay. But when uh, the load goes higher, the patient may feel that uh, the power that he must put on the pedal is too uh, much, uh, too big for him. It is too hard for him to push the pedal. And that's why we can ask to pedal in the high speed, for 70, even 75. And uh, it will provide the feeling of easier work for the patient. But actual work will be the same. Also, we need the blood pressure measurement device. Here I'm using the very simple stuff, cheap one. Uh, but it's quite convenient and it it does a job, so why not? Why not to save some money? Because, yeah, uh, we can have uh, the system with um, a special electronic module that measures blood pressure during exercise. But um, yeah, it's very expensive, I say. And uh, you cannot use conventional blood pressure monitors that you may purchase from, for example, some pharmacy, uh, that, uh, because these systems are not um, designed for measuring blood pressure during exercise. Even uh, ambulatory blood pressure monitors, they are not designed for this uh, setting. So only special system that is written, okay, you can use it during exercise. So this system may be used because here a person measuring is doing the job. Okay. We need to have baseline parameters. And again, I'm measuring blood pressure on the bike sitting. So to, to have these baseline characteristics like ECG uh, from the current setting. Okay, now we're set. We have blood pressure, we have ECG, we have instructions for the patient. And one more thing. Yes, this is Borg scale. This one, I hope you know this stuff. The special chart and uh, during the test I will show this chart to my patient and ask to show the exercise level uh, on this scale. Uh, why it is important? During the test we have um, objective characteristics like workload, uh, like heart rate, but it is also important to have the feelings of the patient. Uh, we have we may have two different exercise stress tests with the same heart rate, with the same um, exercise level, but different patients feeling. So, for example, uh, in the second test, the patient says, okay, I'm feeling that the exercise is much higher than in the first one. When we see the objective parameters the same, what does it mean? It means that during the period between these two tests, patient's condition deteriorated and he feels that this uh, exercise is more um, challenging for him. So our therapeutic measures may be wrong. So, or vice versa. Okay. So I remember this patient a little bit. We met before. And wait. So I'm um, setting build date, height, weight, that's for statistics and for some calculation that uh, being performed during the test. Uh, next step is to find proper uh, exercise uh, protocol. Um, for example, today we're gonna use this um, World Health Organization uh, multi-stage test. 
Uh, it means that the exercise uh, level, uh, the workload level will be increasing every two minutes with the equal steps of uh, 25 watts. This uh, protocol was specially developed for um, ischemic heart disease diagnosis uh, because the reaction of uh, human ex uh, heart rate and cardiovascular system is, uh, depends on the workload in a linear fashion. But when you start with the step, uh, during the first maybe 40 seconds or one minute, the uh, heart rate increasing gradually and then it stabilizes. And this stable period that lasts then uh, the second minute is important uh, to get the change of ST segment during ischemia. So if the purpose of the test is different, for example, to assess the um, maximum performance of an athlete, you need to select different uh, protocol and a uh, polyspectrum software provide different uh, exercise protocols like ramp for example astron test but we are now uh, going with this diagnostic feature and multi-stage test with 25 watts per step and then another important point is assessing pre-test um, coronary heart disease probability Ischemic heart disease diagnosis is a probability stuff. So we are starting with asking person about symptoms, about um, chest pain, uh, about uh, some risk factors. And if we have risk factors that the probability increases, if we don't have them, it increases and so on. So every diagnostic procedure, it uh, increases or decreases the ischemic heart disease probability. So now we, are going to perform exercise stress tests. And before uh, this, we ask the patient about symptoms and I've already done this. And I know that here we have some sort of atypical anginal chest pain and ischemia probability before the test is medium. What does it mean? It means that uh, we don't know if it's uh, pro or contra the ischemic heart disease. And in this condition, exercise stress test is the test of choice because it can lower this probability or increase it. So increase it in the uh, case of positive test or decrease in case of negative test. Okay, this will be diagnostic test and I will use be using 20 grade Borg scale. Okay, now I'm ready to start monitoring. Uh, this is a software regimen that provides you the ability to view the ECG without actually starting the exercise protocol and without saving any data on the hard disk. So what, what is it for? Uh, to check ECG quality, to check the electrode placement, and also to check additional contraindications uh, to the test. For example, I can see some arrhythmias, I can see conduction blocks, or say some signs of um, ECG that cannot be uh, analyzed for ischemia, like uh, Wolf-Parkinson-White, for example. It, uh, yes, that's not uh, the contraindication for the test itself, but it's uh, the reason not to perform the test for ischemia diagnosis because I can see nothing with this uh, kind of ECG. But now we have our ECG is okay. I can start recording. I need to input blood pressure data here. Special window appears on screen. Okay. Here the resting ECG by 10 seconds. This ECG will be used as a reference. So we are recording it in the same patient position at the following test. Then we have warm-up phase. Please start uh, pedaling. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, the patient is checking the pedaling rate on the monitor of the bike ergometer, but here I can um, see the actual RPMs on the software screen that is comfortable because I don't need to work back and forth to check. 
Okay, we are now have our 60, 61, that's okay. Yeah, you can actually skip the warm-up phase if your patient is uh, aware of the test or the procedure, is riding bicycle every day, so no problem. But if your patient is not familiar with the procedure, uh, you should better have this warm-up phase uh, to get patient used to this um, setting and also to check if everything okay. So then the software starts the exercise protocol itself. So the exercise will be going up uh, in 25 steps every two minutes. What should I do during these two minutes period? For sure, I need to check uh, ECG. I can check uh, native ECG, uh, 12 lead, and also I can check uh, average curious complexes uh, to see the signs of ischemia like ST depression. On the second minute of the every stage, I need to measure blood pressure. To pay attention that it's not uh, immediate procedure, you need time to perform measurement and to come back. It is convenient if you have technician who can help you. And Actually, that depends on your practice. Uh, in some countries, technicians do all the stuff, all the tests. Uh, in some countries, uh, um, the test is supervised by the doctor. So it depends. But for sure, bet if you have a team, minimum two personnel here, with one person is monitoring uh, patient's ECG continuously and the other person performing these like blood pressure measurement, some electrode checks and all the uh, stuff around. So now we are close to the switching to the next stage. Okay, next step, yeah. Uh, maybe you should uh, you should check the uh, patient and encourage to um, so look in the eyes and check if the workload is okay, appropriate, if no signs of fatigue or maybe some uh, state when the patient may lose conscience. So that's sometimes that happens, and for sure on every stage or every second stage. You should come to the patient and ask what the load looks like here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's a colored scheme and you can have um, the answer. And the software have special field where you can input data. And this data is saved in the recording and you can check them next time. Mm -hmm. So the normal reaction uh, is increasing systolic blood pressure with the diastolic blood pressure uh, the same as in the rest, or maybe a little bit decreasing, a little bit increasing. Uh, that's why it's, I would recommend you not to um, tell the patient the actual numbers, because some may be confused or worry about the high blood pressure during the test. That's normal reaction, but you will spend a lot of time to explain the patient what's the physiology under this. It's not uh, a good reason to start this explanation during the test. It may be later when you explain the results to your patient. Uh, anyway, now we are on the third step with 100 watts. Uh, it's a quite good workload for our patient. I can now activate drift filter uh, because you know that the less filtering you use during the test it's better actually. Good news that uh, polyspectrum software saves 
unfiltered data too so you can check how the data looks like um, after the recording uh, without switching off the filter or switching on the filter but better you see the native ECG but when you your patient start to feel that exercise is not very comfortable it's not an easy ride um, so it starts moving the body and this makes more noises on the ECG yeah for sure it's better to use some filtering mm -hmm. okay So, so we have now exercised 97 or 98% of uh, the um, pre-calculated and I can stop the test now and go to recovery. Mm -hmm. When you start thinking about termination of the test. Actually, uh, we have two situations. You achieved some goals, that predetermined goal of the test, or you achieve some clinical outcome. In this case, we don't have any clinical outcomes because no pain, no fatigue, or no signs of positive test or some uh, feature that can tell us that, yes, there are problems with the um, heart in this patient, particular, in this particular patient. So we go to another reasons like our goals and uh, very often the goal is to have 85% uh, of uh, age predicted heart rate. Yes, that's maybe reasonable point, but please think about this point as a relative reference. Uh, you can stop. Uh, that's not the so rule of thumb that when you achieve 85, so you stop the test completely. No, it depends on the clinical situation. If you see that the patient can move further, you can go further. Uh, yes, if you achieved 85% and the patient doesn't have any complaints and you don't see ischemia signs on ECG, no ST segment, depression, or like this, you can say, okay, this test is negative. But for example, you see some signs of uh, some small depression or something that looks suspicious. Why not to move further and go to 90, 95%? No problem if your patient allow you to do this because the, there is no contraindication to continue the test uh, according to the heart rate actually you need to think about different options what you want to do with the patient what result you want from the patient if you want i i don't think that you want questionable results in the end you want some definite solution is it positive negative or uh, so, so positive or negative it's no third option okay now we are in a recovery period and uh, recovery can last for a couple of minutes. So while speaking with you, I forgot about measuring blood pressure on the first minute. Yeah, that's a problem. When you perform this test, not in a real situation, but in some lecture condition. But now I can measure the recovery. Mm -hmm. very nice so our blood pressure has recovered completely it's really the same as in the beginning of the test uh, you cannot think about waiting of heart rate recovery because it can take a long time especially if the test was with a high workload with high uh, heart rate like in our case, we achieved almost 100% of age predicted heart rate. So mm, we don't need to wait till the heart rate uh, will be the same as before the test. 
but what we must wait we must wait uh, elimination of any symptoms elimination of any exercise induced ecg changes like st segment depression or elevation or t wave change or arrhythmia so everything must go out must gone and uh, blood pressure okay blood pressure may be higher than before the test but better we wait until it stabilizes on some level better the same in the uh, that in the beginning and also we wait if maybe some new things arise during the recovery period because you no know, the recovery is not a passive process it's an active uh, thing uh, because autonomic nervous system tries to restore the Mm, blood circulation after the exercise and we have increase in parasympathetic um, flow and decrease in sympathetic nervous system activity if these branches of autonomic nervous system do not react according to the current situation in the blood circulation of the body you can see maybe uh, drops in blood pressure, maybe even syncope or some arrhythmia arises. So that period may be interesting. Uh, even sometimes you can see delayed ischemia. Yes, in some patients you can see that. So it's better to monitor ECG, record ECG, maybe five, seven minutes after the test termination. If after this period you have nothing interesting, yes, we can stop the test stop recording and just free our patient from the bicycle and go to the analysis of the results.